Hi team, this is um, just an abridged battle report. Um, so I didn't film the whole game that I've played today with Steve from um, Shepparton, but I've filmed parts of it and I'll give a summary of the game at the end, but, but I'll basically go through with you what we did today. Um, Steve's only played, well today's the game we, um, we played was only his third game, um, and he wanted to play a 1940s uh, scenario, so we dived into the Blitzkrieg handbook, and we went with, uh, appropriately enough, uh, Blitzkrieg, uh, which is a very good scenario. Um, we rolled for our force morale, and we both ended up with a force morale of eight. We both rolled a two, and then I rolled for my patrol phase, um, and I got a six, so I got three free moves. Uh, prior to that, of course, we rolled for our force support, and um, uh, I accumulated a grand total of 15 support points. And um, Steve got half of that, seven, plus the two points for uh, difference in our platoon ratings. I ran a German motorcycle reconnaissance platoon. And um, uh, Stephen ran a regular British um, infantry platoon. Um, so he had a grand total of um, uh, nine support points and I had 15. So for my 15 points, um, I took a fourth a motorcycle reconnaissance squad with the junior leader, so that was five. I also took an infantry gun for another four, so that took me to nine. I took a flamethrower um, for three points, so that got me up to 12. I then took a red dice, uh, so that had me on 14, um, and I... Didn't worry about the, the single one point. I, I couldn't be bothered. Um, it was mainly a, a fun game anyway. And um, what um, Steve took um, for his eight points, he decided uh, to go with a uh, A-10 uh, cruiser tank and a Vickers uh, Mark 6C. Um, so that was seven and I can't recall what his other two points were spent on um, but um, that was uh, that's what he took um, what we then did was um, I, I did the patrol phase and um, um, like I said I got three uh, a bonus three moves and um, I'll, uh, we'll go to that video now and you can see how it panned out from there. But yeah, just in summary, again, this is not a full battle report. It's rather just an abridged one um, as I continue to uh, struggle with the technology. Um, I'm doing this all basically on an iPhone. I haven't even looked into any kind of editing programs or um, things like that. But, um, but we'll get there. Um, and in about three days' time, I'll be travelling to League of Ancients to play a 28 mil uh, scale, sorry, 20 mil uh, Junior Command game um, with the guys down there at League of Ancients. And if I can film that one, I will. Uh, if not, I will then uh, film a, another game in 28 mil as soon as I can. All right. So yeah, um, let's go to the scenario. Um, I've done, um, I've got a three, so I moved one, two, three, and then my first move to there. And Steve, now you can, you can do your first move with your patrol markers. Right, so I can move. In any, anywhere you want. Obviously you want to stop me. Like I'm still, trying to, I still got to stay within one foot though. Yeah, you've got to stay with one, within one foot of your, all your patrol markers have to remain with it. You know, keep that one foot consistency. Between one patrol marker to the other, they ignore terrain. They move through buildings. They move through, whatever. So that's not an issue for them. Right. But they just can't go. They can't move more than a foot, and they have to stay there's within wind, a foot. There's windows, aren't there? So yeah, yeah. There's two. There's two. But you can. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be in there. Right. I suppose. Yeah. The thing to remember is that where you where your jump off point actually ends it up may not be there. Is going to be six inches back as oh, a minimum yeah, six right, inches so back right, from yeah. where you where so. you finish so you, you want to make sure you move forward you, you want to take as much ground in the patrol phase as you possibly can 
Right. All right, so that one goes there. All right, so um, seeing that you're moving to my flank, I'm going to throw this one out. So I'm going to move a foot that way with this guy. So that's him there. All right, now over you again. Well, if you do that, you'll be more than a foot away from him. Oh, okay. So I've got to be... Yeah. So they've all got to stay within a foot of, of each other. That's the main thing you've got to remember there. So it still should be a foot for that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, so I'm going to throw this guy out. Um, uh, pretty much just out this way. That's pretty much forces my hand then. I've got to do that one first, don't I? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to stay within a foot of him. So I'm going to move him up to there, which puts him within a foot of him, and it should put him within a foot of that one. Yeah, oh, timber. So I'll just move that one back a little bit. And that, because I've got to stay at a foot. So, okay, so that locks that one down and that one. So let's have a look. What you've got there is you've got a Bren team, even I'll though just, there's one dead. Oh, you're gonna, yeah. well, you want to yeah, do, do these guys? You'll do that one first. All right, okay. So, and who are they shooting at? These guys yeah. here? Oh, no, well, they can see the well, guys. Well, they can see the, the guys in, uh, well, in the open as I well. I say the rifleman can't, could they? Uh, I don't know. I reckon they could. Oh, right, it's your call, I don't care. Yeah, okay, well, I'll do all this. Okay, so you've got uh, a Bren gun shooting through there, because even though there's only two guys in the Bren team now, yeah. it's only when they get down to one yeah. that it's affected. Um, actually, I don't even think it's because a Bren should be able to fire with one guy, but anyway. Um, but he has got two points of shock on him, so he's going to lose for every two points. He loses a dice. He loses a dice, so he's going to be firing five, and you've got two riflemen there, so that's another two. So it's seven dice hitting those guys in the open, and so they're going to be hitting on. So um, actually, if they lose, they don't they start with? Are there six? Are there six dice? Yeah, yeah, Bren guns are six. So any box fed light machine gun that we always fire, well, most. And you're eight though, aren't you, the machine? Uh, yeah, my, mine's a, yeah, look, I'm firing buckets around right, down there. Just it. Okay, yeah, so, good one. so you're hitting on four, fives, and sixes. Well, I've got four hits then. Four hits out of seven. All right, oh, so. Right, four hits, sorry, four hits on the other two guys. Yeah, well, it just stays the same. Yeah, four, four hits. hits. Okay, so um, two on the rifles, because there's a rifle team there. Uh, one dead, and. Um, Two on the machine gun team. Uh, cat's always nothing. So I've got one dead rifleman, which means it could be the NCO. So if I roll a one, he's hit. Nope, it whiffed it, it was close. So one of these one of these dastardly German riflemen has uh, gone, I've been hit, Schweden Hund. Um, so that's the squad in the building shot from their two windows. So it's done. Yep. So you've got a squad over there now. Maybe. Now, they're going to shoot at these guys because that's the only ones that they can see. Um, and you've got two, four, six riflemen and you've got a Bren gun, uh, six. So six and six is 12. And you're using a two, so you can't modify it in any way, shape or form. So uh, that range, it's going to be a, f a close range. So, yeah, 12 dice uh, hitting on four plus from these two. Four plus... Take the bad ones out, might be easier. Seven hits, is it? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put three on the machine gun team. And I'll put four on the rifleman. Because uh, nobody likes riflemen. So, um, one point of shock on the rifles. And then three on the machine gun team. And nothing, because they're in hard cover. So I've got one point of shock on my... Um, Rifle team, so they've gone up to all of two. All right, and that was the shock on them. So they've rolled a five. So um, yeah. Uh, what else you got? Is that it? That's it. Yeah, and now now oh, he came on on the three, the old uh, Vickers. Mm -hmm. So you could put him on Overwatch if you want. So you could put him facing down the road. And if you put him on overwatch, it just means if I've got a vehicle and it comes on that end of the oh, road, yeah. um, you can't... As soon as I'm... It, well, if I shoot, you can shoot. Yeah. yeah straight right. away. I other, can react. Yeah. yeah, you can react. So that puts the Vickers on overwatch. All right. So I'll do a quick wrap-up of um, 
the game I played today. Uh, <clears throat> basically, the scenario was a blitzkrieg scenario, so the Germans are attacking uh, down this road here, and they were attempting to um, the, the objectives to get two units um, off the table uh, before the Allies can accumulate um, two chain of command dice. Um, so when the in the British first phase, they were pretty much able to get all the, the whole platoon deployed. Uh, there was one platoon in this area here, uh, sorry, one section in this area here. Um, that's the uh, platoon sergeant uh, there. They deployed another section in this area here, and the third section was deployed in this area here. Um, once I saw that all the all three British platoon uh, sections were on the ground, I pretty much knew. Well, obviously, I knew where they were going to be deployed. Um, eventually, the British also deployed their two-inch mortar into this area just here. Um, as a German, what, Germans, what I did was I deployed uh, all three of my uh, primary uh, squads from my platoon uh, in this area here. Um, first one deployed um, into this area here, and it, uh, straight away I opened fire on the British section in the building. Uh, the second section then deployed behind this wall here, and it also fired onto the British section in the building. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I deployed my 50 inch mortar, a uh, 50 millimeter, I wish it was a 50 inch, a 50 millimeter mortar here, um, and they started firing onto the troops in the building as well, as did the infantry gun, which was orientated facing towards the building here, and they fired onto there. So you can quickly see that I was amassing a lot of firepower into this area. <clears throat> Around about the second or third phase I deployed, um, I'd moved the section that was here up to the, the wall, <clears throat> which brought them um, under fire of the British section here. This section then went from engaging targets in here to providing covering fire onto this section here. Really, it was mainly just a nuisance value. Um, the German flamethrower team also deployed and then moved up to here. And I'll explain why that was happening in a moment. The third section deployed in behind this area here and then it also added to the firepower into this building here. As a consequence, the British section in here was soon uh, neutralized. It was pinned and the junior leader was killed. They eventually broke, um, fled back. Once that was achieved, the squad that was in here uh, came over this wall, went around the minefield, and then uh, headed straight for this area here where the British two-inch mortar was. Uh, as soon as they got close to the wall, the two-inch mortar uh, uh, sensibly beetled out of this area, but only got as far as uh, this open ground here. Um, the Germans then got a double phase. They were able to get over the wall, deploy their uh, MG-34, and then fire upon the two-inch mortar that was here and then killed them. Um, so at this stage, British morale was crumbling pretty quickly with a section uh, wiped out, uh, sorry, a section broken, um, a junior leader killed, uh, a team uh, wiped out. Um, and they were also amassing a lot of chain of command points. They were, they, they got, a, they had one dice probably within about three phases. It was, whereas uh, by contrast, the Germans uh, was still on one chain of command point. Um, once the British uh, saw the threat was here, they, they then got this section to come over the wall and try to move through the orchard. And as they were coming through here, that's when my final, my fourth section, which was a support option, it deployed uh, from this jump off point, which you can see just behind this tree here, deployed in here, but they couldn't see in far enough into the orchard to see the British section who were able to sneak through and get away that way. That didn't bother me too much because then I thought, well, okay, now I can either press for this squad to go around on the outside and exit the table that way, um, or this squad was going to go around and exit the table that way. But um, instead, um, with the Vickers uh, light tank coming up and then coming into this area here, that sort of like nullified any idea of me getting the section off this way. Um, so instead what I decided to do was, I was going to try and actually break the British morale rather than try to get the squads off the table. And at this point here, 
I got a double phase again. I did have a chain of command dice by this stage and I could have removed three points from Steven's chain of command dice. Steven's chain of command dice at that point was, he had one full dice and was two pips off getting the second one. Uh, but he was also down to three com, uh, chain, uh, command dice, so the odds of getting double five I thought were remote. And I thought um, I would use the chain of command dice instead to interrupt rather than um, take the three points off. That would have been the safe option, taking the three points off, but I thought it would make for a more exciting game to use the chain of command dice to interrupt and... Steve was a fairly new player. This was only his third game, so I was keen um, to show what all the different things that you could do with Chain of Command Dice, even though I only end up amassing one. So I got a double phase, brought the flamethrower up to the wall. Um, second phase got him over the wall and in a position. There was no overwatch to be concerned about. It was the British phase. They were going to roll their dice. As soon as they did that, I was going to interrupt and then smoke hopefully the Mark IV, um, sorry, the Mika, Vickers Mark VI uh, with the Flamethrower team. But as luck would have it, um, on three dice, Stephen rolled two fives. That gave me two chain of command dice and one in the game. So his morale was down to three. Mine was at, still at eight. We both started at eight. Um, but yeah, he, he held on long enough and I uh, wasn't able to use my interrupt dice to smoke the uh, Mark VI. Um, but it was a really good, fun game, and that's the main thing, and especially when you've got a guy who's only played, this is only his third game, and um, you're trying to uh, get him to, you know, um, you want to make the game exciting and interesting, um, and uh, I thought that would be would have been an exciting thing to do. Um, uh, but, yeah, it um, was a good game. And um, I wish I could have filmed the whole game, but like I said, it was, um, there was just me and Steven. And uh, it was, like he said, it was only his third game. And I wanted him to, um, I wanted to make the experience an enjoyable one for him. Um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get I'll get a full battle report in soon. I'm still grappling with the technology. I'm using, I'm basically doing this whole thing just on an iPhone. Um, yeah, I haven't even looked into any editing software or anything like that. Um, but uh, hey, we'll get there. Um, what else am I going to do? So um, that's that for now. I'll catch you later. Ciao.